Welcome to UCF Nightline, your source for UCF sports and former player information. Hello, Night Nation. This is Andrew Fegley, and this is episode number 41. And it is Memorial Day weekend. I'm Trey Strolko. Hello, everyone. What did you do? Did you do anything exciting? Went down to South Florida and caught a Marlins game. Is that where the pictures were from that yeah. you were sending me yeah. in, in Twitter or Facebook or one of those kind Marlins of things? game. First time uh, ever seeing the Marlins Stadium. Cool. Yeah, no it, home runs, so I didn't get to see the Marlins statue and sculpture in the outfield move or anything. It moves? No, it moves, yeah, when they hit a home run. <laughs> it looked like a nice place. I couldn't really tell where it was. Who were they playing? $650 million stadium. Wow. The game uh, where the uh, Oriole pitcher was thrown out for a foreign substance, use of a foreign substance. Yeah, I saw it. He had something on his arm or something. Yeah, right? either like rosin or sunscreen or something. or something or other. Some crap. All right. Well, that's uh, interesting. Three more stadiums to go, and then I will have seen every Major League Baseball stadium in person. All of them? I've seen 27. No way. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, the three left oh, are learned... the uh, Houston, Minnesota, and the Yankees. You learn something every day. I did not know that. Wow. That's crazy. So you've been to Kansas City. Yes. You've been to Royals Stadium. I saw Kaufman Stadium. I saw a Royals game against the Rays on a Thursday night. Jose Lima was pitching. The K. Were there, was there anybody there? <laughs> it was a big storm. It was like a two-hour rain delay. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because uh, it was a number of years ago, I guess. It was before they did whatever refurbishment oh, they've yeah, done. So, so I haven't seen it since. Yeah, it's but really, people really say nice it's a bit now. of a different ballpark oh, now. Yeah. It's awesome now. I mean, it was awesome before, but it's really awesome now. I'm becoming a little bit more of a Royals fan now just oh, because band, I'm, I'm from on Kansas. The I'm on the bandwagon. Back again, on yes. the bandwagon? In fact, I have a Yankees hat that I wear a lot, and I, I, I really am starting to feel bad about wearing the Yankees hat. Why do you wear a Yankees hat? Because my girlfriend she's from new york so she got me a yankees hat i like the ny logo thing on it i just don't like the yankees okay you know what i'm saying not really i mean yes i like but... the logo the ny i've always liked that logo and i like new york but i don't particularly like the yankees you wear this in public i have in fact i'm gonna wear it one day with a royals shirt in the yankees hat and we'll yeah, see what that'll happens. go over real well I'll go to a Royals-Yankees game. All right, so we should probably talk about a little bit of UCF stuff. You know, it's funny with these, uh, this summer, every couple of weeks we're doing this, uh, that we miss a few things along the way. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, not doing this uh, weekly. Uh, of course, since we last had episode 40, uh, softball had a good run, but bowed out at Florida State a week or so ago, and uh, baseball whimpered out on its season. Yeah, uh, speaking of baseball whimpering out on its season, I think they they kind of uh, did they what what happened? Did they give up or or what what happened? No, no, I don't think so. What uh, what happened? How do you how do you go from ranked number six in the nation to being unranked and not even winning your the uh, postseason the AAC championship? Yeah, bats went cold, so they weren't putting up. Double-digit runs. But were these people that ranked them number six, like, were they, like, uh, hallucinating when they did that? No, but or? if you go back to that they were beating, you know, Mississippi two out of three, and then they did well out in that South Alabama tournament, uh, beat Maryland. So they had quality wins. They had a good RPI. Uh, but, so if they have those quality wins, why can't they beat, like, ECU, Florida, uh, whatever, the South Florida? I think that's a, a good question because in Sunday's AAC final, uh, East Carolina beat Houston. East Carolina is the champions. Of the AAC. Right. Uh, in, in, the, in the championship, yeah. And, and that stings when you think about it. Because so they won the championship of the tournament and the championship of the, of the league. They won the league tournament and the regular season. They didn't win the – no, Houston won the, Houston won the regular season. Did they? Yeah, Houston won. Okay. Because I thought that, I saw somewhere that, that, that they won both. You know, we go into the season, uh, ranked 22 preseason, and projected second to Houston. So big disappointment Sunday for Houston, losing 9-1 to one to ECU. Congratulations to ECU. But that one stings because they've come in from Conference USA – 
UCF was seventh in this tournament and goes out two games, double elimination, Wednesday, Thursday, done. And the way they went out was the way these latter several weeks of the season had played out. Uh, the pitching wasn't strong enough, uh, not enough runs, not enough timely hitting, and uh, 31 and 27 on the season. Disappointing, disappointing to be as high as sixth and to finish 31 and 27. You know, the big slogan uh, these last seven years of Terry Rooney as head coach was uh, on the road to Omaha, a host of the College World Series. On the road and broken down. Well, on the side of the road is what's happened. Uh, now, on the road, to, you can't get to Oviedo with the way they've been playing. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Mean, loud. So, all right. So, one of the things that Rooney said, I believe, when we talked to him, oh, this team was the first one out last year of the tournament. Well, they're way, way worse than the first one out of the NCAA tournament this year. Well, from sixteen and eight in the AC play uh, a year ago to ten and fourteen. Right. So, so they've I mean, gone across back. the board. Yeah, they've across, gone backwards. Yeah, across the board decline. Yeah, season with, to season with supposedly some players that are better. A very heavily senior laden team, thirteen seniors. Right. So this was supposed so, to be the year, and I think you can tell his confidence going into the season. You know how you tell we talk, we've talked a bit about Donnie Jones's scheduling or lack thereof uh, as a uh, statement on what he feels his team can do by you know the the scheduling of the weak non conference slate. I think Terry Rooney looked at this club and scheduled very well for an RPI, and their RPI was very strong. So it seems to me that it had a lot of, lot of confidence in this team, and they were rolling along. The game I point to that I think of, and I don't have the exact score here, but it was a game at Daytona Beach uh, against Bethune-Cookman, and I, I clicked on Game Tracker getting home from work, and we're up something like 14-3. to three. Right. And, and it seemed about right. And then the final score is like 18-14 to 14 or something. I thought, what on earth happened? Uh, and the bullpen just gives up a, a ton of runs, and that's what happened last weekend in that South Florida game. They gave up a, you know, late uh, ton of runs to, uh, on the bullpen, and uh, there, there was the, the the South Florida game. They're up twelve to four, going into the ninth. They win that game twelve nine. They give up five runs in the ninth. All right. So next year, what uh, what could we do to to better that next year, and what will UCF do? to better that next year. Well, they're going to have to bring in a lot of people. Uh, you know, one we, person that they could bring in would be I've heard some people talking, some fans um, really are interested in not having Terry Rooney back. I don't think that that is realistic. However, it may be time for some coaching changes. It might be time to bring in a pitching coach. Uh, it seems as if though some changes are are needed. Where the bigger question, I think, is just after seven years of Rooney, where are we as a program? Where is UCF as a program? What, is, what has he done for the program in the last seven years? I it, mean, is it is it better than it was? You can have up and down years, certainly. And, and football has had that until some more recent and consistent success. But where is the program? 31-27 and 27 overall, two and out in the AAC tournament, seventh seed, on a season in which you were preseason ranked 22, get as high as six. You know, it just doesn't seem like it's trending in the right direction. They'll be able to recruit. But as uh, a friend of mine that it sits with me at, at baseball said, who are we out recruiting? Are we out recruiting the Gators in the top 10? Florida State that's in the top 10? Uh, a strong South Florida? Miami's we're consistently not even, good? That was what I was going to say. We're not even out recruiting ECU and, and South Florida, obviously. Tulane, these other schools yeah. that came in from Conference USA. Yeah. That's the one that really burns me is that when you're behind those Conference USA schools that come in. Yeah. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be behind, you know, a, a lot of teams that we are. Um, but there's a lot of things to replace. Uh, now you lose your, your prime starter, Zach Rogers, who was uh, undefeated on the season, your Friday night starter. He was undefeated? He was one of only two pitchers in baseball with 10 or more I did not uh, wins realize, that was undefeated. He was 10 I did and not realize that. Wow. Yeah, That's impressive. Um, and now you have to fill that slot. Now, he was the one as well, though, that did not take a major league deal that could have, correct? Is he the no, guy? No, that Frenfrock. 
That oh, was it's Frenfrock. Frenfrock. That was Frenfrock. I thought it was, I got Zach Rogers and Frenfrock. I knew that somebody didn't, but Frenfrock did fairly well too. Seven right? and four, seven and five, but yeah, winning record yeah. still. Hmm. He's he, he had a pretty good year, but still, I mean, people talk about Donnie Jones as well. Do you give people don't want to give Donnie Jones more time in his seven year plan? Do, what about hmm. the what about the the eight year, ten year, fifteen year plan for Rooney? I mean, does can you do any worse? If you tried to get somebody else, can you do any better if you tried to get anybody else? Well, on this car trip back and forth to Miami to see the Marlins, uh, my friend and I were talking about the state of UCF's athletic programs. Like, if you took the 15 sports, if you could divide them into three groups of five, top five, middle five, bottom five, you know, you think men's and women's basketball are in that bottom five. Where's baseball? Is baseball at 31 and 27 in that middle five as an average program uh, for UCF? I mean, look at the success. I don't think so. Rowing, uh, I don't know, rowing is not your prime sport, but you win an AAC title. Women's golf, you win the AAC title. You have a lot of success in a variety of programs. Volleyball was success. Women's soccer was success. Several programs with success. And then you have baseball at 31 and 27. One of the comments on the message board this week was someone posted what they supposedly wrote to uh, athletics director Todd Stansberry about, you know, are we accepting mediocrity? in men's basketball and baseball. And I think that's a question worthy of discussion. There are a lot of factors that go into it. I certainly don't know what goes into Todd Stansbury's uh, evaluation. You look at uh, academic success, graduation rates. Those are very important for UCF. UCF consistently one of the strongest programs in the country in that area. So that is uh, to be commended and is certainly taken into account. You look for off the uh, field issues, problems. We mentioned a couple of weeks ago about a basketball player arrested for stealing a bicycle. You know, you look at yeah, those things. we don't things. have any police report this week. No, no police report this week that we're aware of. And uh, and then you look at contending for conference championships. And it doesn't seem like men's basketball is there. And it doesn't seem like baseball is there. So, I don't know. I, I don't know what athletics director Todd Stansbury uses to evaluate. Fans are getting restless. Uh, that maybe changes need, but I don't know who you bring in that that does a better job right off the bat. Has Stansbury ever fired anyone? To my knowledge, no. He's had to replace coaches. He's had good hires. Uh, he's had some coaches leave, and he's brought in people Assistance, that have success. Right? He hired the women's soccer coach, and okay. they've had uh, great success. Right. Uh, so he's, I believe, he hired the women's golf coach. Success there. So he's he's had some great hires, but no ho- high profile. Um, termination hmm. or replacement well, i don't know maybe he he would be the guy to to stir the pot and, and to to get some stuff going well know, i thought I the guess. question on the message board was good is is that what is your level of expectation is 31 and 27 or the lack of success that's that barely basketball? a winning season yeah where where does he think the program is yeah and where does he want it to be obviously they want the academic success they don't want off the field or off the court problems, and they want to be in the mix contending for conference titles and postseason play, and it seems like those programs aren't there. I think really what they need to do right now and what they need to concentrate on is making some money because there's obviously been some issues with, especially with the revenue sports football more than anything, with the AAC losing a bunch of money last year, actually. <laughs> that, that's an understatement, yeah, losing a, a bunch a of money. Bunch. A bunch. A 45% decline in AAC revenues That's under the new postseason when they moved away from the BCS. That was a big headline that this is, week. And, and the AAC is the only conference within the the Power Five and the, the other five that lost like that. Conference USA didn't lose revenue. The MAC didn't lose Those revenue. conferences g- gained, didn't they? Because they gained they, a ton. Yeah, they gained a ton. Yeah. Well, it's, remember that TV package when the all the leagues started shuffling around and right. what the Big East the used Beast, to bring. Right, right. The and ACs under, on TV all the time, but I it's not a lot of money. That. I understand that. But we jumped from this conference to, you know, or from the other conference to this conference to to gain what? And I, I don't really understand. There was a little bit to, to gain that one year of... Well, they didn't think that it was going to fall apart when they joined. So yeah. that was not, I mean, they well, thought they were joining this. Somebody had to know that the, the BCS championship stuff was going to end because I think that that was decided at that point. I don't know. I guess it's it's all Conference USA over again anyway. I mean, but. Yeah, but 
But, but what did we really gain from this? But again, back on the baseball discussion, even if all of that's accurate, and I'm not saying, you know, th- there is a decline in revenue, East Carolina still beat us in basketball. East Carolina just won right, uh, the baseball. That's what I'm well, saying. They, they got the a same... greater revenue. Right. Oh, I mean, they probably they may, in fact, have some better revenue streams right. than UCF. It isn't all about that AAC TV money. I also saw a quote, I'm sorry, in that story that I believe the Central Florida Future was... One of many outlets with it, but the yeah. Future did a good job with it. I saw a quote in there saying something like it would be 2025 before any of the Power Five conferences, except for the SEC, would be willing to add or subtract anyone. Here it is. If UCF was ever to leave the AAC for a Power Five conference, the earliest it could do so would be in 2025 due to grant of rights agreements between four of the five major conferences. Only the SEC doesn't require it now. That's 10 years. By the way, what year is it? <laughs> That's 10 years. So all the talk that we're moving anywhere tomorrow. According really to George don't. O'Leary, most of the UCF real supporters will be dead by that time. Oh, well. God because. Oh, geez. <laughs> no. Is that a direct quote from I'm Coach O'Leary? No. But what <laughs> I'm goodness. saying is at the, the hometown huddle, he, you know, he said, oh, well, everybody's 65 and over that's here, you know. And, but anyway, so the, uh, the 25, few... I mean, not 25 years, 10 years is still a long time to basically simmer in the stew of the AAC. The uh, future article has the American signed a six-year, $126 million deal with ESPN that expires in 2020. UCF's share of that is $2 million annually. It's just a drop in the bucket when you look at the the Power Five uh, conferences. Where this has impact, I think, to, to bring it full circle, is that you don't have the revenue that leads to the type of recruiting that's necessary in your non-revenue sports. Uh, So great testament and power to those sports that go above and beyond and exceed their expectations. But a sport like baseball, men's basketball, you you don't have the same. That are revenue sports. Those are revenue-generating sports. Yeah, I I think that's arguable. At most schools, they are. Baseball, maybe not. There's only a couple places. Yeah, baseball, maybe not. But but basketball definitely should be a generating, revenue-generating. Should, could. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. it's if in UCF's sports world, basketball, men's basketball has to be second, second most popular in terms of uh, attendance and ticket sales. That's and sad. At about, to be honest with you, well, at about an average of forty five hundred. It's sad. Well, I mean, they go beyond that. No, I know. Baseball's at what a thousand, eleven hundred, and no disrespect to the other but, sports and no, the tremendous for basket- athletes, but they right. don't draw the same amount of crowds that even baseball. What I'm does. saying is sad is that they can only get that many people to a basketball game. No matter if they're good or bad, they should be able to get more people than that. But it's a school of, of how many students? 60,000. And we just hit uh, you get... 250,000th alum with the recent and how spate many, of graduation. How many students do you get to a, a basketball game every Not game? a lot. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. They need to work on that. Well, that Every time they gave away t- free T-shirts, the student section was packed, answer. wasn't it? This is your until halftime, and then they left. Well, that's <laughs> so fine. The sure. <laughs> Give them a free if they they made up this whole like points thing, right? That seems to be working. I think for the first nightmare half. rewards. Yeah, na- na- they just need to. They really need to concentrate on some stuff here. I mean, Stansberry is doing it on the revenue thing. You hate it, of course. What he's doing. We've talked about this many times on this show. I don't know. What are you talking about? The East Side Club. Oh, the Tiki Bar. The Cabana Bay. Cabana Bay. Boy Club. Club. I don't know. It's a start you uh, know, something in a direction that, on revenue, certainly. I'm, I'm kind of pissed off today, if you can't tell. Everything I've said I is, this for, is pretty much from this podcast. time, pretty much <laughs> from the beginning, I, I've said nothing but you know, negative and uh, a little bit uh, aggressive views today. But I was out by the stadium yesterday. I just happened to drive by on McCullough, and I saw this sign on the side of the stadium. Home of the East Side Club. How about Home of the Knights? Whatever happened to that? Home of the East Side Club? Are you kidding me? Did you drive in? Did you see it? No. No, you haven't seen the work? They're no. making a lot of progress now. But on the side of the stadium, Home of the East Side Club. What about Home of the Knights? Is it more important that we have this East Side Club, or is it more important to be the Home of the Knights? Because obviously it's the home of the East Side Club. Right? Right. Why would they have a sign? Oh, I'm Well they're trying to promote and I'm sell sure they seats. are. I'm they're sure trying they to sell are. out that section. I'm sure they are. But anyway. 
Well, but you right House Network I Stadium. Mean, now here home I go. of the East Side Club. Now here I'm going to defend that. But what else do you want them to do if you want them to generate more I wanted revenue? I want to say Bright House Network Stadium's home of the Knights. Okay, but then you also, but you're going to allow featuring them to, featuring the, the East, East Side Club. Club. Obviously, I'm from Kansas City, and if anyone ever said about Arrowhead Stadium, Arrowhead Stadium, home of the the Bob's Barbecue Booth, <laughs> or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That would be like like against Kansas City's religion if they did that. You know what I'm saying? That would be like people would protest. There would be like like a riot instead of Arrowhead Stadium, home of the Chiefs. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I think they should take that banner down. There should be a I'm... petition to take the banner down. <laughs> you, you start that petition. <laughs> See how far that goes. Todd Stansberry, I want the banner down if you're listening. I know somebody's listening from there. Take the banner down. They're not taking the banner down. <sighs> Home <laughs> of Todd Stanberry's Cabana Club. Brashad Perryman, I guess now is a major league pitcher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he threw out the, the first pitch of the Orioles game. Did I you see it? I think that's cool. Don't you think that's cool? It is that cool. Did, did you see it? Yeah. yeah that, I think that's cool. Was it a good pitch? He's all right. Okay. Anyway, so... There's been talk of him, ESPN and a couple other places have said that he could be a, a real good pick for the outside rookie of the year. Well, like, that, that like may be a rookie, little bit much, The rookie but... of the year underdog. Really? But they're looking for him to really, like, do it. Well, we've, we've talked about this, that we think he has a real good opportunity to make an immediate impact. But yeah, I, I, I hadn't thought about it in those terms. Yeah, somebody from ESPN, I, I don't, but uh, I read it someplace. <laughs> <laughs> Our sources required. I, I will never name my sources, by the way. Do you have sources? You have real sources. There was—I I don't know who it was. That's I know this saying. one isn't, but do you have real sources? Of course. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, of course I have sources. Do you have? Don't you have sources? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. So why would I tell I, you things? Uh, I learn things. Of course. There's we have the source of the internet. Well, there's everything more than that. that's said on the internet is true. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No, it's funny though that when you do something like this, like the podcast. People chirp in your ear and tell you things. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's I wish people would tell me more stuff. Like recently, uh, eh, we're not going to go there. I think I said something about there being an announcement, and I was oh, yeah, one of the was first good. people yeah. that, that said that. Was that the Georgia Tech home and away? It was. Because of a friend of mine that chirped that in my ear, said, hey, something's going on. Somebody told me. I promised I would not reveal his source, which I will not. He was my source, and... You know, it, something happened. It came true. So whatever. That was That's pretty just good. That's one of those things that kind of happens. Yeah. That was exciting. I actually, we, we mention a lot on here, UCFsports.com, and I was actually able to get that up there before Brandon did, and that is doing something. If you can do news on UCFsports.com before Brandon gets something up there. That is saying something. It is saying uh, something. He, and, he lives out there. And Brandon even was like, you know, wow, you know, good, good job. And I was like, I replied, yeah, yeah, hard to do because, you know, you've, you've got it all covered. So a couple so, weeks in, what do you think of the new message boards and uh, the look of it? I like it. I like it. I, I, I like really... the embedded video that, yeah. you, that you, wow. you can do now. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah when, when I post a YouTube link, which it's right there, all you have to do is click on it. That's a beautiful thing. I like that you can like and dislike things. I like that a lot. I think that's cool. In fact, I liked it. Uh, you know, click the little like button. What's been cool for the Nightline podcast is that through the replays, which has been the repurposing of several of our more prominent interviews as we hit this summer slowdown, temperatures heating up, but the sports cooling down a bit, that we've been exposed to a whole host of new people that have found the Nightline podcast, and that's been good. Yeah, you know, the other thing about that board, I like it because it tells you when somebody's replied or liked your thing, so it actually gives me more of a feel of you know, what people are responding to. Cause sometimes I'll miss it. If I don't check it, I'll miss it, but it actually sends you, it can send you alerts and all kinds of stuff. So that's cool. And I know this has happened to you and, and some of it's been on the message board, but I like when people give us ideas on people to interview that right. they want to hear, Hey, whatever happened to, not or that we're so running so. out of people to interview. There's all kinds of people we can interview, but we want to know who that you would like to hear. No, I, mean, I like when people say, Hey, yeah. what's going on with so-and-so? Where did they go? If and, we can get a hold of them. Yeah. So, I, mean, I mean, sometimes that's a not challenge, all these but people uh, are, yeah, uh, we had actually, I mean, I'll just say we had somebody scheduled for today. It didn't work out. Um, sometimes that rescheduled. happens. Rescheduled. Rescheduled. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's why we're just talking to you, but it's, 
it's all good. It's rescheduled. It, it, it's Memorial Day weekend. I, I had a feeling that, you know, it could fall through. So it's fine. But for folks, let us know. Who do you, who do you want to uh, hear from? Absolutely. Who do you want us to catch up with? You can uh, there's email like, us. You can tweet us that stuff. Even send us their phone number if you know them. I mean, if you know them, literally. Nightline Podcast on Facebook. Uh, UCF Nightline Podcast on Twitter. You can always email info at ucfnightlinepodcast.com. Yeah, we're everywhere. It's uh, UCF underscore Nightline on Twitter. Yeah, all that stuff. Just please send us stuff. Send us, you know, and there's a thing on ucfnightlinepodcast.com, a contact us form. One, you know. Probably would you say the most popular interview that we've done uh, that you just posted on replay on YouTube? I can't even remember. Was Bo who, Schneider. Oh, yeah. What, I love this, <laughs> that I believe... Every member of Bo Schneider's family has now favorited uh, or liked the the Twitter page. Absolutely. That's <laughs> great. Because they, they keep coming in. So-and-so Schneider. So-and-so Schneider. Like yeah. his entire family good. has liked that's the, good. The, uh, the page. That's good. Yeah. That's uh, unbelievable how many people have, have heard that interview. And, and he is now on campus. He's actually here now, this week. So that's good. I'm excited. And he creates that uh, from his background and his play. Uh, great interview with us, and uh, he does. He creates excitement. People are interested in seeing him play. And the hair. The, the, the <laughs> hair creates excitement. It does. People comment about that. The There's a lot of comments about the hair. I, you know, this this kid, <laughs> really, in the next couple coming years, he could he could be a superstar. So we will see. People are definitely interested in him. He's definitely, you know, one of the, he's, he's kind of a, a little bit of a character, too, so giving jimmy johnson a run for the maybe maybe his hair will get its own uh twitter handle one day didn't jimmy johnson his hair have a yeah probably speaking of twitter i'm sorry this is did you hear that obama now has his own twitter handle yeah but he's not doing it is he it said hey this is barack the first one well yeah so somebody can they finally gave me my own twitter account after whatever years so if you have anything to say to obama it's at POTUS on... I really am not interested yeah. in him playing on Twitter. I'd rather just, you know, lead the Well, he's available <laughs> and would like your comments, so... Okay. Anyway, we sure. will not turn this into a political discussion. And when you can get him to say, <laughs> this is President Barack Obama, that I'm listening to the Nightline podcast, send him a message. <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I, can get I, will, I will tweet him uh, and see if yeah, he will do it. Yeah. That'd be awesome, actually. That would be fun. I want uh, some other former presidents to do it first, though. Okay. <laughs> I knew I'll that take that any would president you've got that wants to do that promo. Yeah, I knew that that would get some stuff. Any president there. you want that wants to do that promo. Anyway, that Micah Reed. Gone. Gone. Running back. Decided to transfer. He has uh, kind of gotten himself into an UCF not being his fault, but, but pushed down and down the depth chart because of a couple freshmen that are here and doing good things in practice. He was being about the number fourth or fifth running back with a healthy stand back, if that is, and, you know, not good for him. Hopefully he will go someplace and do something, though, because I think if he stepped down into maybe a Division One AA team or... Something like that, he could probably really do some stuff. And if he's going to play this year, I believe that's where he would have to go. Anytime so. somebody leaves the program, uh, especially here in the slow off-season time, it's uh, it's worth the discussion. And I think that, as you say, speaks to some depth there and the competition. Coach O'Leary mentioned competition being a factor. And he, in that. you know, thanked Coach O'Leary. He put out a tweet. I don't have the text of it right here, but but that's how he kind of. Uh, made that public knowledge is by tweeting it twitter's full of all kinds of stuff sometimes full of you're censoring yourself well okay. I, this is you know i family have, uh family podcast. i have it marked as as none um what do they call it non profane what non, is it yeah family valued rated e for well, everyone that's good. Yeah. oh, oh well, we're yeah, rated well, e good anyway taylor oldham still Injured, according to the uh, Orlando Sentinel report. Oh, there was week. a Sentinel report. I did yeah, not. Yeah, it was. Uh, a sen- we we talked about it at uh, the the time of the spring game. Right. That uh, that he was injured. That he uh, that he was injured. So there was actually a Sentinel report on an injury. Yeah. The uh, on May twenty first, 
Injury status for UCF wide receiver Taylor Oldham still day to day. Okay. And we've been more than a month since. Did they uh, say the what it was? Uh, was it an ankle or uh, Shannon Owens Green? Uh, his pride. His pride. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> um, <laughs> the uh, junior suffered, according to Shannon Owens Green, her report in the Sentinel suffered what appeared to be an ankle injury during the spring game and has been unable to play since April. Any more news from Shannon Owens Green there about the sports program? Any of them? <laughs> I'm just I'm just asking. Was there any other news from anyway? No. Just asking. Okay. So is it that you would like more coverage in the Orlando Sentinel? Well, is that what you're looking for? Um, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> well, but remember we were talked going into the spring game uh, that you want to get through that without anybody getting hurt, and then we saw him yeah. uh, get injured, and and I guess that was her update that you know okay he's a uh, quote from coach o'leary he's in a cast right now and really we won't know in anything further see, until the end this. of session you, b you, you brought this up so i did not see yeah. this article in a cast cast wow and the day-to-day was a quote for coach o'leary usually casts especially after this time are not good she writes that Oldham's absence will certainly be missed this summer when players work on their chemistry during self-run workouts and drills of course we don't know how long it's a, it, you know it's funny it's missed it this says, summer well it yeah. says day to day and then we're yeah. alluding to the fact Woo. that he not might not play in the summer and then you get the uh, the cast situation not an opportune time ladies for him, and obviously. gentlemen it's a career ending injury no, no i'm just joking hope not no of course not we don't want that to happen but anyway so there's there's other stuff going on in it as well um the there's going to be a hometown downtown huddle hometown yeah hometown, perhaps uh, downtown. coach o'leary will have an update on taylor oldham's ankle uh, I don't June know what else. Is, yeah, I don't know what else he's going to talk about because I don't think a lot's been going on there. Downtown Church Street uh, Station area, Cheyenne uh, Saloon. Saloon. They'll have the um, the hometown huddle. Do you think he's going to dress a, as a cowboy? No, it's a, it's at a saloon. No, he's going to wear one of the two blazers he wears to every event. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the uh, I like this. The first 100 fans. And get a free T-shirt. Remember what you're talking about on the oh students coming out to the games. Yeah, the first uh, 100 fans in attendance get a T-shirt. Wow. So, know, did you go on the May 11th one? Absolutely out of the not. No, no. No, it was like what day was that? Monday. It was a Monday. It was a Monday night, and so this June three ones coming up in a little over a week. It's ridiculous. That's, uh, that's like it's a Wednesday. It's ridiculous that these are when they are six to eight. Cheyenne Saloon Church Street. Have something in the fall. Well, maybe they will. I mean... You don't know. No, maybe they're planning some. Oh, you know what? I bet they're planning something at the new home of the East Side Club. Yes. Jeez. It just got to be completed in time. So, uh, Army and Navy. There's some news about them. Navy being now in the AAC. They have no plans to move the game for the college put- football playoff schedule. Yeah, as you mentioned, Navy, now in the AAC, uh, will... Actually picked by someone to win the side of the AAC that they are on. But they they impact strength of schedule all across the board, and they are refusing to play that game that they play traditionally for what, more than 100 years with Army, and quite honestly, I don't blame them. Yeah, why should they? Why should they? So the NCAA has now got to put contingency plans in place, because what if they are contending for the AAC title? What if they won the AAC championship game? And they are in that, you know, the, the, the group of everybody else, <laughs> whatever they call that group. Group of five? No. The, the, is that what that is? I there's the know. power five, and then there's the rest of us? The group of five. Uh, whether they would be in position in that, you know, to to get one of those access bowl slots could determine, uh, be determined based on beating Army. Now, they've owned Army for, like, more than a decade. They haven't lost that game in 10, 12, 15 years, something like that. So... I don't know how big a concern it is, but they're holding firm that they're not going to play that game any earlier to satisfy the NCAA. The Wouldn't Army, you like to go to that, though? It would be fun. Yeah, I mean, it's a armed forces, you know, all that. That's cool and all. I want to go to Navy for one of our UCF road games. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. I did mention my boss is a Navy fan, so this this could get pretty interesting. I told him the other day, hey, somebody picked Navy to win the you know the, their side of the, the AAC, and he's like, of course. You know, and I was like, whatever, dude. They're traditionally whatever. a good program, though. They've got like... Navy. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about Navy. Men's Hoops Conference pairings have been announced. Yeah. Yawn. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, UCF's pairings, meaning that they will only play at home Cincinnati. They don't go to Cincinnati. 
and they will only play away SMU. They don't have SMU at home. I don't know. I, I, UCF goes into weird. both of did those they, games did, underdogs. To did me. they change something there with divisions or anything like that? No, I, no, not that I don't know. I just think they announced who we're not doing a home and away with on both sides. Can we of, win any of those uh, away games? It's going to be go back to where we were talking about hot seat, if you will. And I don't know who besides a couple of fans uh, on the message board and some other people like us talking about hot seat for Donnie Jones, but the AAC tournament is here in Orlando at the Amway. So there's a little bit more pressure to win more than five conference games this year. That would sure be cool to, you know, be able to perform in that tournament just because it being in your own backyard and, you know, being the host of that tournament. That's why I think there are heightened expectations for this coming season. I would hope so. Significant progress. I would definitely hope so. Which is interesting. You know, we'll talk more about this when the schedule comes out, but, uh, and I think we talked a little bit about the end of season. What is an acceptable number of wins to show progress for men's basketball within conference play? If you were at three and four and five, well, what, I think what, there's is nine is nine and nine, not a, at least a reasonable I think goal? now there's a couple hot seats. Like I said, there's, or like we said, there's a hot seat with baseball and now. Is it hot? I it's think warm. It, it should be. Is it warm? If it's not hot, it should be. Anyway, I think I already said that. How about some news and notes for UCF? How about that? UCF men's basketball coach Donnie Jones announced the hiring of Christian Webster to the team's coaching staff. Webster comes to the Knights after two seasons as an assistant coach and four years as a player at Harvard. Also going to be new at UCF in the fall to the women's soccer program, Finland national teamers Vera Veris and Katarina Nauman. I don't know if I'm right. Usually you get the hard names to pronounce. (laughs) This one fell to me. And uh, Miami transfer Courtney O'Connell will be new members of the UCF women's soccer team. The list of participants at the 2015 NCAA East Regional Track and Field Championships includes 11 members of the UCF team who earn spots as individual events and in addition to both the 4x100 and 4x400 relay teams qualifying. Congratulations to them. And also congratulations to the women's rowing team for winning the AAC championship. Since we've been gone, yeah. yeah. They won. That's pretty cool, actually. I think that they should build a new and better venue for the rowing team. I have no that's, idea where they do the that's rowing. That's quite a but, bold statement. Well, they. Uh, I think that oh, we're going to have to make one of those next year, I believe, one of those rowing contests, wherever they may be. It's one of the couple of sports that I've never attended in person. Yeah. I don't know. How do, how do you attend that? I don't know. On a boat? I don't do you row beside them? No, I don't. In a they, kayak? They would, they would be much yeah, better than... They'd be like, it'd be like a tricycle compared to a, a jet or something. I don't know. They would be much better. Anyway, guys, this has been... Guys and gals. This has been episode number 41 of the UCF Nightline podcast. Perfect timing for that music. There's the music. I'm Andrew Fegley. I'm Trace Trolko. Go Knights. Remember, check us out on YouTube. Replay coming soon. Twitter, all that stuff. Victory is a cry,